McHugh is a 1974 film directed by John Sturgis and marked the first film in which John Wayne played a cop. That cop is Lon McHugh, a Seattle detective whose partner is murdered. When the police department won't let him investigate, McHugh turns in his badge and sets out to investigate the murder his way. As I said, this was the first of two films in which John Wayne played a police detective, the other being Brannigan, which was released the year after this one. Both films were quite a departure for him, as everything in the years leading up to these films and his two final movies after these were all westerns. McHugh definitely feels like the John Wayne answer to something like Dirty Harry, the lead role of which was famously originally offered to John Wayne. I think he was right to turn it down, unless that script would have been changed to more fit in with the image of John Wayne. Even McHugh, which is a much more toned-down film than Dirty Harry, has a bit of a seedy side, and that contrasts with the style of film that John Wayne was always associated with. But even despite this, there is still quite a bit to enjoy about it. And the main factor is, of course, John Wayne. This is the Duke in all his seasoned, action hero glory, and he's great. His first scenes are a little jarring, seeing him in anything but Western clothing or a military uniform, especially at this stage of his career, is strange initially. Here, he's in polo shirts, suits, zooming around in a green firebird, and it's pretty fun seeing him in this mode. He brings his usual easygoing charm and ambles through the movie with that familiar walk. He might be trying to downplay his usual walk a little bit, but John Sturgis knows to place the camera in a hallway and just watch him make his way through a room. He usually towers over everyone else there and carries the whole film while he does it. The character of McHugh isn't a terribly deep or nuanced character, and most of his backstory and persona is filled in by seeing John Wayne in the role and knowing what tough guy cops are usually like. There's a fun little element that he lives on his boat, and feels to me like that was included because of John Wayne's love for his own personal boat, the Wild Goose, which he basically lived on while not shooting movies back to back. The role is quite intensive. Other than the opening scene, I think John Wayne appears and dominates every other scene of the movie. Comparing to some of his westerns at the time, like Chisholm or Cahill, where the screen time could be divided up amongst an ensemble cast, here McHugh is the whole show, and the story basically follows him crisscrossing the city, facing off with hitmen, keeping his former colleagues at bay, and paying visits to his various informants. It's a very physical role, getting in gunfights, a fairly intense interrogation, and several car chases. During the chases, you see a vulnerable side to John Wayne that you don't often get. Seeing him behind the wheel of a car going at pretty wild speeds, I think you can tell that he's just hoping he's going to make it out of this. But you also get the quiet, simmering rage that he could play so well. It boils over once or twice, but most of the time he sets about his mission with an almost resigned, man's gotta do what a man's gotta do type attitude. And the guns. The fact that McHugh has to continually give up his pistol almost becomes a running joke. Going through, to my count, four handguns before settling on what was definitely designed to be the iconic weapon of the movie. Harry Callahan has his 44 Magnum, well, Lon McHugh has his 9mm Mac-10, a compact little machine gun with a giant silencer. Watching John Wayne wield it is a lot of fun, particularly during the finale as he cuts loose on a whole gang of henchmen. It even got a place of honor on the movie's poster. The rest of the cast is filled with people in fairly small roles. As I said, McHugh pays them a visit, gets what he needs from them, and then moves on. But these small roles are populated by a lot of familiar faces. Julie Adams plays McHugh's ex-wife, and hers was the one role that I wish could have been expanded to help flesh out the McHugh character and lean into his loneliness. In her one scene, McHugh visits to borrow some quick cash from her new husband. And there's an interesting shot where McHugh is on one side of the screen, and on the other is his ex-wife, their daughter, and the new husband. John Wayne gives this mournful smile, and then walks away, back to his case. The happy little family that he's no longer a part of is an interesting angle, but there are car chases to get to, so never mind about that. Roger E. Mosley, TC of Magnum P.I. fame, plays an informant, given plenty of 70s lingo to throw around. He and John Wayne play well together, but when John Wayne asks if he's shining him on, let's just say that the hip talk doesn't work quite as well. Al Lettieri always makes a great gangster, Salazzo from The Godfather being his most famous role, but here he plays Manny Santiago, a big-time drug dealer that McHugh is sure must be involved. He's a nicely menacing bad guy, but that menace definitely diminishes under the withering gaze of John Wayne. David Huddleston is fun as a private investigator that McHugh goes into business with to make him an actual licensed investigator after his premature retirement. Q. Gulliger is pretty bland and lifeless, though, as another cop that pops up here and there. 
Diana Muldaur plays the widow of John Wayne's partner and is quite good. The romantic interest she has for McHugh is a little hard to swallow and the age gap is very noticeable, but thankfully we aren't subjected to any love scenes. Colleen Dewhurst plays an informant slash drug-using bartender that McHugh goes to for help. I've watched this movie once before, quite a few years ago, and her first scene ruined the movie for me then and nearly did this time when we got to it. The reason for this is the content of the scene. Her performance is fine, I guess, but I don't want to see John Wayne getting cocaine ready for an informant. And the rest of the scene, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth that thankfully the rest of the movie manages to almost wipe away, but it's definitely the low point of the movie. And finally, Eddie Albert delivers what I would say is the second best performance in the movie, playing the police captain who is getting very tired of McHugh's rogue tendencies. He's a former detective who probably knows McHugh from the old days, but is now a bureaucrat, trying to play by the rules. But the character also gives you some doubt as to his motives and his true allegiances. Eddie Albert could play an outwardly upright but possibly crooked character so well, and is fantastic playing off John Wayne. As I'd mentioned, it was directed by John Sturgis. He's known primarily for action films, his most famous being The Magnificent Seven, The Great Escape, Gunfight at the OK Corral, but he could also handle smaller scale films like The Law and Jake Wade, Last Train from Gun Hill, or Escape from Fort Bravo. Like John Wayne, he specialized in westerns, but transitions to urban action very well. The movie is overall fairly low key, and the action is kept realistic and in short bursts up until the finale. The gunfights are brief, the car chases aren't filled with impressive driving, it's just pedal to the metal racing through the streets to accomplish an objective. This makes the movie feel grounded and doesn't require a noticeable stunt double to take over too often. Surely a stuntman was used for some of the driving, but it's shot well and doesn't make it too obvious. Duke's stuntman Chuck Roberson is even in the movie as a henchman, so he was definitely on set. But besides the action, John Sturgis really plays it like a film noir, and especially after McHugh goes into P.I. mode, it feels a lot like a Philip Marlowe story or other 70s neo-noir style films. There were plenty of private detective TV shows on the air at the time, but the location shooting in Seattle and the atmosphere that certain scenes contain lifted above a lot of the usual L.A. set adventures of a Mannix or someone like that. No disrespect to Mannix, I love Mike Connors and that show. The opening scene with a mysterious sunglasses wearing man making a particularly violent morning commute is great, cruising through the dim, misty streets, and later as well, with McHugh entering a darkened office and coming down the hall in shadows, it gave me a brief view of what an actual John Wayne film noir might have been like. That was the one genre that John Wayne never entered during its heyday of the 40s and 50s. His contemporaries like Robert Mitchum, Jimmy Stewart, and Kirk Douglas all made appearances some more than others, and I've always wondered what a dark, shadowy John Wayne film might have been like. Big Jim McLean might be the closest we got, and that's a rough watch. McHugh isn't exactly a noir masterpiece, but it's got some nice touches. Also, this shot in the early morning light is really nice, very atmospheric. There is a heist element as well, and is again very low-tech, kind of basic, and I wish they could have been a little more inventive with how that all plays out. I have questions about the procedure for destroying narcotics seized by the police as well, at least about how it's portrayed in this movie. The slack security and transportation method, which involves a couple of guys in suits driving open cardboard boxes across town, seems susceptible to robbery on a regular basis. But regardless, it leads to another good car chase that feels somewhat inspired by the French Connection, with McHugh driving whatever is the shortest route to catch up with the thieves, no matter the terrain. And the finale, which I've referred to already several times, is really great. It's a car chase along a beach with cars zipping through the surf. McHugh gets to unleash his machine gun to its full capacity. According to the making of featurette, this was the first movie to utilize flipping a car using a black powder charge inside the car to simulate flipping on its own. It seems incredibly dangerous, and the crowd of people on set seem to think so too. The result is incredible, with the car making a series of flips along the beach. I believe nowadays they use air cannons to achieve the same effect, and that just sounds safer. Black powder inside a running car sounds inherently dangerous. That standoff as well, and John Wayne wading through the surf with his gun dangling casually at his side, is a great image. The score was by Elmer Bernstein, who did many of John Wayne's movies through the late 60s and 70s. He understood the assignment and gives us a jazzy score that wriggles its way into your brain, but he also can't seem to help himself, delivering a blast of western-sounding motifs to accompany the action or an especially dramatic scene. 
So, would I recommend McHugh? I'm a little torn. It's definitely not essential viewing, and if you're a fan of John Wayne, it's a little outside what I would say is a comforting return to when everything was right with the world, or when John Wayne was still making movies, whichever way you want to word it. If you're a fan of 70s cop movies, or neo-noirs, I'd say check it out. It's an interesting story with an investigation that contains enough twists to prevent it becoming overly predictable, but also without being convoluted. So it's a mild recommendation. But what about Brannigan, you may or may not be asking? Well, stay tuned. I just might be getting to it very soon. Thanks very much for watching my review. If you enjoyed this, I hope you'll consider checking out some more. Thanks again, and adios for now.